Hello ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Olson here from TextLearn.com and today we are in lesson 2.2. We will be discussing how basic strings work in Java. So what is a string? Well, strings are objects in Java which allow you to store and manipulate sequences of text. Just as you create variables for integers, you can also create variables for strings. And we create strings in the same manner that we created integers in the previous lesson. Without further ado, let's launch Eclipse here and I'm going to create a new string. We type the identifier or the variable type, my bad. And in this case, last time we did int, this time it is string because we are creating a string object. And I'm just going to call this my string. We use the equal sign and we use quotation marks to write our string. So, hello world. And the line with the semicolon. So that is how you create a new string. We have the object type, the identifier, and the initial value. Now we can print this out using system out print line. So print out string system out print line using the print stream we print out my string and of course we don't have to put quotes around that because we are passing the variable which is a string directly to this print line string method so when we were actually using when we typed hello world in here the first time we were just creating a string right there and sending it to the print line method now we're just creating the string outside of this statement so let's try running that as you can see, the output there was hello world, just as you would expect. That is how you create strings. Simple enough. Next thing we're going to talk about is concatenation of strings. And that is spelled C-O-N-C-A-T-E-N-A-T-I-O-N, -E concatenation. And concatenation is just a fancy word that means to take two strings and put them together. So let's make another string string another string equals my name is Kevin period and that statement with a semicolon and now we are going to combine these two strings together so let's create a third string output equals my string and to concatenate the strings all we have to do is use the plus sign or addition operator and we add another string to my string. Now not all programming languages are this simple for concatenation of strings. There is also a separate concatenation method that you can use. We'll get to that in a second, but this is the easiest way to do it, so this is the way I want to show you how to do first. Print out the string, so we're going to change that from my string to output in the system out print line. So now we are taking my string, another string, adding them together or concatenating them throwing that into a new string called output and printing out the output. Let's go ahead and run that. As you can see it says, hello world, my name is Kevin. So that worked exactly the way that we would have expected it to. Now we're going to do the same thing, but this time we're going to use the concatenation method. To do that we use string output equals my string dot con hope dot concat and another string so what's happening here is we're using a string method known as the concatenation method and this is just doing the same thing as our plus sign was doing but instead now of using the plus sign we are using the actual method of the string object from the java api or that's included with Java. So now we have the same exact thing. Let's try running that. And as you can see, same exact output, just a different way. Instead of using plus, now we're using concat. So that is concatenation of strings. Next topic will be substrings. So let me bring up my website here and show you the diagram for this. Now strings are indexed starting from zero instead of one and that means that they're zero based. That's how a lot of things in programming work. 
whenever you're referring to indices of something, generally they start from zero. So hello world has a total of 11 characters in it, including this space right here. So if we just wanted to extract the word hello, we would be looking to get the indices zero through four. And now we can use the substring method in the same way we use the concat method and get a substring. So now we are just going to try to extract the word hello from my string. So let's just do string output equals my string dot substring and the beginning index will be zero and the ending index is going to be we have zero one two three four so it's not actually four that we're going to put in as our second parameter here it's actually going to be five because the ending in index is exclusive so that means that it will actually stop before it gets to this fifth indice, so it won't concatenate or it won't get the substring with the comma in there. And notice that these two values are separated by a comma. That is how pretty much everything that you pass to a method in Java, which is what we're doing in this case, is going to be separated. So this is the first parameter or the param zero, and this is the second parameter that we are sending to this substring method from the java.lang.string. All right, let's go ahead and run that. And as we expected, it printed out the word hello. Of course, if we change that to a one, one to five, it's gonna do hello. And that is how you can get strings or substrings from strings. Another useful method that you might need to know is the string length method. And to get the string length, all this does is it returns an integer, I believe, that represents how many characters are in the string. So int how long equals my string dot length. Yep, and it is an integer as I would have expected. Now let's combine this and we'll put a message in here. You can actually do this. This is the first time I'm going to talk about this. The string is, and then we have a plus in there because we're concatenating the strings basically. The string is how long plus characters long. We go ahead and run that. The string is 13 characters long. So let's count those out. So H is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, period. That makes 13 characters. So that worked the way we would have hoped it would. And that is the string length method. And one of the final things I want to touch on with strings is how to print out formatted strings. So I'm going to teach you a new method here. Instead of using print line, we're going to use something else, which is called printf print function. And what this does is it works pretty similarly to how the previous print line and print methods work that I discussed, but instead it allows us to use what are called format specifiers. Let me just bring this up real quick so you can kind of follow, follow along here. All right. So it works similarly to the print and print line methods discussed in the previous topic. We already said that. The printf method allows you to place format specifiers within a string of text. Format specifiers begin with a percent sign and end with a converter. To print variables within strings, you simply add format specifiers to the string of text in the first argument of the printf method and then fill all the additional arguments with the variables you wish to take place for the particular specifier. And the format specifier for an integer is percent %d. So let's go ahead and try this out. You'll be able to tell what I'm talking about a bit better if I just show you an example. So let's have an integer x equals 152. Random number there. Now we could have printed this out using system out print line 
the number is plus x. And that would have printed out what we wanted. But to do this using the printf method, we can do the number is percent %d. Then we put a comma after the quotation mark there, and we pass it the variable that we want to be represented by that percent %d, so that format specifier. Go ahead and run that. And it says the number is 152. Now, you can do it either way, but there is greater control over the display here when you use format specifiers, especially when we get into things like doubles and numbers with, say, for example, doubles are numbers that have decimal places, and we'll get into that soon. But when you use format specifiers, you can specify exactly how many decimal places you want. So if you have an example, or for example, you have a variable that has 1.15892, you might just want to cut that off after the first decimal point and get one point, I think I said one or whatever. So definitely learning how to use format specifiers and then printf method is something you should be paying attention to. Now let's make another int y equals 33. And int result, or let's make int sum equals x plus y. So now we have 152, 33, and the sum result of adding those two together. And we will print this out in the printf method. So we can do percent %d plus percent %d equals percent %d. So we want to replace the first one with x, the second one with y, and the third one with sum. We put a comma in here. We do x, we another comma, y, and finally sum. Now you have to put commas between each value you want to pass, and you'll notice that these are in the exact order that we want them to be displayed. So the first one is going to come from the x here, the second percent %d will come from the y there, and the third percent %d will come from the sum here as the last parameter or argument. We run that, and the result is in our console, 152 plus 33 equals 185. That sounds right to me. And the last thing I want to talk about as far as the format specifiers go is the string format specifier. So we have percent %d for integer. The other one is percent %s, and that will give us a string. So string a string equals some message, and some message is percent %s. So now we'll re leave all that there. We will add another comma, and we will do a string there. Instead of using percent %d, now we're just using percent %s to print out the string in this location of this first parameter. Run that. 152 plus 33 equals 185, and some message is some message. Works flawlessly. And the last thing we're going to talk about in this lesson is escape sequences. So what are escape sequences? Let's take a look on the website. When using the print methods, there will be times when you need to insert characters or text elements that you simply cannot insert normally due to restrictions by the Java language. For example, you cannot print out a quotation mark simply by typing the quotation sign, as this would end the string prematurely. Instead, you need to use special escape sequences, which enable you to print out the character you need. Each escape sequence begins with a backsplash, and below is a list of some key escape sequences. So whenever we need to put in a tab, we can use backslash t in our string. We need a new line, we can use backslash n. We want a single quote, we do backslash single quote. We want a double quote, we do backslash double quote. So let's try a few of those out. System out.print. This is text on one line, backslash n, that is the new line. And here is another line. And that statement with a semicolon. 
and you can see it did use this slash n. It doesn't show up in the console, but we know it's there in the code, and that way we created a separate line there. And what I was talking about as far as the quotes go, so Kevin says, hello, it's a nice day. Of course, we can't run this because Java sees this as being the end of the string. And now it's wondering what these are, and it's probably thinking they're undeclared variables of some type. So how do we get those quotes in there? Well, we use the escape sequence, slash, slash. We'll run that, and now we can, hey, Kevin says, hello, it's a nice day, and the quotes show up in there. So those are escape sequences, and there are a few more which you can view at the Java documentation. And there are a lot of them, or quite a few more that you can see there. So definitely check those out, check the links out, make sure you're still following along with the videos and looking at the website textlearn.com, read over the stuff so you have a good idea of what's going on. In the next lesson, what will we be talking about? Primitive data types, so that'll be a lot of fun. Hope to see you there. Take care, guys.